Another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend just a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings card game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. And I'm Ted Bannock, and I love to explore talking about cards. I love to explore cards and talk about them and how great they are in various parts of Middle Earth. And I just generally have a good time. And I think what we should also do, David, is we should explore our list of patrons. We should explore our list of patrons. So um, for anybody who doesn't know, we like to have patrons who give a couple of bucks every month. If you want to give a couple of bucks to help keep the lights on, you know, right down here, right over Ted's head is the uh, website, patreon.com slash card talk 2018 um, join any level you can help keep the lights on and help support our blog it's all rolled into one big namesake i guess so the the blog also found at cardtalk 2018.com has standalone reviews about all the cards that we review on the podcast usually and playthroughs and all sorts of stuff matt the blogmaster, does all sorts of good stuff over there at the blog um, so you can join the Patreon list, um, like Martina, Thardir, Stephen, Mark, Jason, Ryan, Manuel, Grant, Katie, Rachel, Tony, Valentin, Eric, Dern's father, Moritz, Anders, Shane, Micah, Chris, Reagan, Rob, Brandon, Scott, Joe, Peter, Niall, Carl, Vardine, James, Joshua, Matt, Justin, Kidian, Bob, Daniel, Bob, David, Sean, Lou, Phil, Joseph, and Dominic. All of those folks have helped keep the lights on, and we appreciate all their contributions. Um, we're still a little bit removed from next year's swag. I still have to finish up getting out the international swag and the updates for all the for all the continental people here, not uh, the the United States patrons because there was a misprint and I'm still trying to wrap that up. So thank you for everybody for your patience. Um, you still get everything that you get and it's coming to you uh, by Christmas. That'll be your Christmas present from Card Talk. So Anyways, Grant, we're not here to just talk about the patrons and talk about how awesome they are. We're here to talk about other cards, or about cards from the game and how awesome they are. So, what card are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to explore the depths of the Mirkwood Explorer. <laughs> um, from the Thing in the Depths Adventure Pack, he is a three cost, two willpower, one attack, zero defense, two hit point ally with the woodman and scout trait after Mirkwood explorer quests successfully place one re progress token on on it as a response and then as an action exhaust Mirkwood explorer to move all progress from from the Mirkwood explorer to a location in play <laughs> well grant wow you read it and it's been a while since you've been on the show for a regular for a regular review, why don't you uh, why don't you start us off? What do you think about the Merkwood Explorer? I think he's expensive, but I also think he is probably one of my most used law allies. <laughs> um, his ability and questing power puts him over the bar for usability versus cost. He's got two hit points, which means he's not going to get taken out by a single necromancer's reach. He's got relatively good willpower for his cost, and he passively generates um, progress tokens on him whilst commit the, as long as you commit success, quest successfully. And say you've quested successfully three turns in a row, you can get rid of a three progress location in the staging area or the active location. Um, if you're running with Asphaloth on, say, Glorfindel, that's a five pro 
threat look a five progress location gone straight away after if he's already got like the three progress there. So Yeah. I agree with all of that. Ted. Yeah, it's uh what Grant said. He he is a bit pricey, so uh having one lore hero is you know, a three cost card when you only have a single lore hero in your deck, it's generally tough to do. But any anytime I'm running two or more lore heroes, the deck is not usually so combat focused. And this guy is great because he's got two hit points and two willpower, and then he's just passively picking up those progress tokens so um you know probably three to four turns later he's going to be just getting rid of a location for you and in the meantime he's questing for two so it it's pretty great <laughs> you get willpower on the board right away and he doesn't immediately get rid of a location but but he will later on um, so the earlier you get him out, the better. When you put him out late game, it feels not so great because you're like, well, he's just going to be kind of too willpower at this point, and his other stats are are not that stellar. But it's uh, still a great card that I love to play very often. Yeah, I mean, for me, I I enjoy this card. Um, it's there's what do I want to say? There's a history maybe of Lord of the Rings making the thing that something is good at making that trait small and then or making that attribute low so that way you're not do it like uh, Thalon. Thalon you always want to commit to the quest because it can do one damage to things that are revealed by the encounter deck and so but it, he only has one willpower. Theodrid you want him committed to the quest because you generate the resource but he only has one willpower. You know, here you have something, you have an ally that you want to be committed to the quest and he has two willpower and that's where his, like, you're not going to be using to defend or usually attacking. So, you know, he's got all the stats right where you need him. Um, I do agree that that three cost is high, but, you know, that the, 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 the being able to put, um, put those, those, accrued progress tokens anywhere you want is phenomenal. The one thing that I always get upset about is that I'll, I'll be using a Merkwood Explorer. I'll be playing solo and I'll be able to clear locations. And by the time I actually get maybe little location locked or something, or, you know, I'll have, I'll have, I'll get a surge, you know, location with surge or something where I end up with two locations, you know, it seems like I'll have, you know, seven or eight progress tokens and I can't put any number of progress tokens. I have to put all of them onto the location. So I mm. wish that there was a way to, you know, put any number, you know, do the same action, but then choose to maybe do five, you know, instead of putting all eight accrued progress tokens on there. So it always, it seems like a waste if you, you know, if you have two or three of these guys out and they end up. I don't know, just blowing up stuff. Yeah, he just kind of dumps his whole load at once. <laughs> just blows his load. That's what she said. Oh, <sighs> we're going there, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, and Sorry, then just going to go dude. through a That's casual fun. stroll in Merkwood Forest. Ah. Yeah. Ah, okay, I checked out this forest. Everything's fine. Yeah. And so that, I mean, that's the one frustrating part. Um, so what, you know, what about him being a woodman? Does that mean anything or does that matter? They, they expanded upon that trait. Um, I'm glad you brought it up, uh, more so in the last cycle, the woodman got a, a couple of cards. Um, he's also scout traded. So right. I have him in a scout deck, uh, that plays scouting party. So he will get the scouting party bonus. Okay. What does scouting uh, which party gives... do? There you go. Good. You're gonna. Uh, yeah. For those unfamiliar, it's it's a it's a two willpower or excuse me a two cost event in spirit that if you once you commit all your characters to the quest as a response, if every character has the scout trait, they all get plus two willpower. 
<laughs> so if you quest with four scouts, all four scouts get plus two. Right. That's not bad. So he fits into yeah, he fits into that archetype. Uh, there's a couple things that you know scouts can do too with interacting with locations. Sometimes um, I'm thinking of guarded ceaselessly. You know, you could exhaust him to interact with guarded ceaselessly, which is um, an attachment you put in a location in lore that you can exhaust a scout or ranger to give it minus two threat. Not a great action for him because you want him to be questing, but he could do it. But as far as the the woodman trait goes. I think there's like one card in the card pool. There's a lore event that readies your woodman characters. Um, and that's kind of as far as it goes. <laughs> right. It's just not a fully fleshed out archetype. It's yeah, there's not, there's not too much there. Um, but, and there's not, I mean, it's it also, I mean, not to discount what you're Woodman's saying about it being a lore. scout. Woodsman lore, woodsman's lore. Yeah. Okay. Um, one cost, ready up to X woodman characters you control, where X is a number of locations with player card attachments. Yep. Yeah. So you can you can ready them, but it's like. You well, know. it'd be nice to quest with him and then use his action afterwards, right? Ah, uh, true. That's true. You could put you valiant to. determination on him, and you know, and then you can quest with him for two and then and then dump the if post staging modifications right you can still take an action you can blow up a location after after staging with this guy yeah so his scout traits think a little more useful than his woodman trade and, and both of those are not particularly strong but right. that's what i was gonna say it's like it's, uh, he's he's a great card for just added location control assuming he's you get a him utility out card. He's, he's not a he's not a trait bound card he's a utility card right i think he slides yeah. into a lot of different types of decks if you need yeah even if you just need a little more willpower in a solo deck not that two willpower is anything to write home about but that extra that extra those extra resources or those extra progress tokens that he generates every turn that may be the like the thing that you need to kind of get you over that location hump. And like I was just yeah. saying, is like, like you can also use it if he if you're pairing it with uh, spirit, you can use valiant determination and readying effects um, to uh, to ready him so that you could use his um, action any other time you wanted to. So if somebody has um, grim resolve or you know, whatever on the table, you can do a lot of damage if you have a couple of these guys out that are fully loaded with, you know, you have, <laughs> you know, you have four resources, or not four resources, four progress tokens or five progress tokens on this, these guys. Like, it's pretty good. So, and I'm not feeling bad about playing, paying the three cost. Three cost seems a little bit steep, but I think that once he's on the table, you know, it's, it's hard to get rid of this guy. You know, he's got two hit points, so he's going to be sticking around for a little bit. What else? Does there attachments or anything that goes on this guy? Anything? That he's got to... a great beard. He does have a great beard. He um, he reminds me of somebody, and I'm not exactly sure who he reminds me of. There's a there's a character, and I every time I see him. I guess he reminds me of a Rohan character from the from the movies because it's just you know kind of the longish hair with the beard. So I don't know. I think the art looks really good. I you know this is one of those pieces of art that I think fits the character. It fits the fits the the Woodman trait. I think that this is a this is a really good really good match for the card grant what do you think yeah um i love the artwork i mean i think it would be better if he had an axe rather than a long sword in his hand but that's just my personal preference right um but knowing all the dangers in mirkwood i can see why they opted for the long sword <laughs> ten yeah i don't 
I don't know what looks so familiar about him. <laughs> are you are you thinking of gambling, by any chance? From yes. you know what? That's exactly yes. what's, that's what I thought. Yeah. The... Thank you. Right. right. Um. Yeah, maybe that's it. But yeah, he's just his. He, his he he looks okay. He looks fine. He looks like a he's a bearded, you know. Would explore forest dude. And, <laughs> yeah. He's what he is. forest dude yeah his trade is forest dude him. he's the forest dude yeah. traded he's the, he's the forest dude that does the thing with the progress yeah 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 is there any is there anything else that we need to say about this guy uh not not that i can think of like overall he, he's a good card and we mentioned his traits have have minor uses but yeah three's a little pricey but considering you know, is he as strong as say yeah, I guess you can compare him to Northern Trackers and Rovanian Outriders in the sphere sphere, which do a similar task of exploring locations as an ally. Right. And I think you I think those cards actually work best when they're all paired together. Yes. Um but they're very extensive, you know, to have th- three cost lore and then three cost, four cost spirit, that's tough. But if you're running two two lore heroes and your deck is not combat focused, you're kind of more questy. This is a great addition uh, to your deck. But if you have, you know, if your lore heroes are like Treebeard and Haldir, and you're doing a lot of fighting, he's not going to help you in that in that area. Right. <laughs> I mean, when you think when I think Woodman, like, does this guy particularly work with Hal Haldan, like? I, I mean, I know that it does because it allows you to clear those locations that have um, attachments on them, and the, like that's fine. But and for Haldan, that's cool. But are there like does he pr- work particularly well with Haldan, or is it? Well, I mean, uh, right? Double so Haldan is when the active location is explored. Right. His response is when an active location is explored, draw one card for each attachment on it. The interesting thing is about Halden is, you know, I built a lot of decks with him that are focused on location control. And the crazy thing is, is Halden doesn't want no locations. He right. wants at least one location every turn. Right. So it's a fine line. If you're playing multiplayer, like three, four player, you're going to have locations in play. You're going to have excess locations in play. Right. But the lower the player count, it's hard, depending on the scenario, to, to have a location come out every turn. So believe it or not, he, in a way he in a way he doesn't function because you want those locations in play to make sure you're traveling to one each turn. But overall, because the, the Explorer takes time to build up the Morkwood Explorer looks for his opportunity to just get rid of a location a couple turns after he's been in play. Right. So it I generally I do include them both in the same deck though, but there's no special synergy. It's it, yeah, it's that it's I just see. it's just all right. You know, it helps you clear the active location, right? That get the mm-hmm. stuff with, with Haldan. And then I'm thinking of um scout heroes like Idrean, right? You can ready Idrean. So that uh yeah yep that's a good hero to to, to pair uh pair and, him with pair I mean and that's there. so I mean Idrean is a powerful Dunedain so I'm thinking and I've not done this so deck idea right I'm thinking that you know you get a couple of Merkwood explorers out and it doesn't say uh, Idrean readies after using any after exploring any location whether it's in the staging area or whatever so you could you could save the Merkwood Explorer with three or four things. You could use a drain to it to defend because she's got two defense and four hit points. And then you could explore the location with the Merkwood Explorer and then ready a drain. It's almost like readying, you know, it's like, you know, it may feel a little gamey, but, um, you know, it's definitely a thing. So... I mean, you could also go along the lines of, in a multiplayer, I don't think necessarily it works against Haldan solo play. 
yeah, I can understand where Ted's coming from. It does kind of work against Aldan Synergy. But when you've got three or four players in a game, you're seeing a lot more cards. You could potentially wind up bringing half the cards out, which are locations. So Easily, in yeah. That, in, that, in that situation, he's actually working... Yeah. Along nicely alongside Haldan to get rid of those locations once they've got attachments on. Because, as you said earlier, you could commit them to the quest, then use something like Woodsman's Law to ready them, and then use his action to clear the location, to ready Idrain, and to draw a bunch of cards off Haldan. Yeah, I mean, there is some good synergy there. I mean, and, and yeah, I don't think it's anything it's, special. You're not drawing a ton of cards. You just need to get out the the explorer and then wait a few rounds. So it's not, it's not. I mean, if you've got something like say Elfstone or the Woodsman's Path, um, the Woodsman's Clearing, you can draw a couple of cards off Haldan's ability for that. Then, with by exploring it with like the Mirkwood Explorer's effect after. You've traveled there. It's just another possibility. Yeah. And then I yeah. always think yeah. about any synergy with Aragorn. For some reason, scout hero like Aragorn comes to mind because, but I don't think necessarily that. I mean, because Aragorn, it's... the spirit Aragorn, let me be clear, is, you know, I think that that you're just reducing the threat you can put a progress onto something. So it just adds another progress with spirit Aragorn. So, yeah. I mean, in theory, you could clear a location, you know, a three threat location without, <laughs> I don't know. It, it just helps you clear locations. So. Yeah, essentially that's it. That's <laughs> it. And sometimes you can do it a turn earlier. So right. he's overall. Yeah. He's, he does what he does. He's a location control ally. So yeah. I think we can put him through the ringer. <laughs> Just a quick question. He does basically what the Northern Tracker does for one less. Well, n not exactly. Cause the, yeah, well, it has to go in one tracker, location. Yeah, he spews out one on yeah. everything. And this guy collects a bunch to put on a single location. But, but they're very they're similar effects. But he's also costed cheaper, and there is a little bit more resource acceleration in law than what there is in spirit. So, would you prefer running the Merkwood Explorer or the Northern Tracker? If you if had a choice, a choice, huh? Yeah, I know what I would. I would run the Explorer because there's no guarantee yeah. when I'm playing solo that 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 the that the um that the northern tracker is going to hit or hit worth worth it enough you know playing multiplayer i can definitely see playing the playing the northern tracker more but uh playing solo well i think the Merkwood explorer i think i think the wording also helps the explorer more than the tracker because it says move all progress look um progress tokens to a location rather than placing them onto another location where the tracker is now we're getting really technical with some terminology here ted what do you what's your tracker versus explorer uh i i tend to actually run the allies that do the targeted location stuff like the outrider and the explorer over the tracker and it's mostly because the later scenarios that seems to be beneficial er early on if you're playing like Merkwood and Kaza Doom cycles, for sure the tracker, because all those locations can just they're not like immune to player card effects. There's not effects that limit you to placing progress on locations in the stage. Like none of that stuff exists in the early cycles. So the tracker's better. But in the later cycles, there's more limitations on exploring locations in the staging area. Sometimes there's penalties for doing it. And the explorer has the benefit of letting you target the locations you want to get rid of, right? Instead of the sometimes those travel effects can be tracker. nasty, so you can get yeah. rid of, you can blow up those with the travel effects that have horrible and 
don't know. It's I I like the pick and choose aspect of the explorer better than I like the mm-hmm. the I don't know. But I'm playing solo most of the time, anyways. So, well, should we ring this guy ten? Yes, we shall. Okay. So, for anybody who is new to the show or doesn't know, uh, we have a highly scientific yet arbitrary system where we ring a card on a scale from one to ten, where one is the one of the best cards in the game, or the one card to rule them all. In a ten, ten rings is the card that we throw back into the fiery chasm from which from whence it came if i can get that tagline out so grant what do you think of the mirkwood explorer i like the mirkwood explorer so i'm gonna give it a three rings it's like i say it's a little bit expensive but once he's out he starts paying for himself and i've got to love that beard (laughs) (laughs) a three on the beard alone (laughs) <laughs> yep. Maybe a four on the beard and then an extra one for his ability. Ted? I was also planning on giving him a three because there's a lot of lore decks I put this guy into when I have two or more heroes because for all the reasons we said, he's going to immediately have an effect of his willpower and eventually he's going to clear a location if it's not near the end of the game. Um, So he's... He's great. I love him a lot. Yeah, and for me, I'm also going to give him a three. I'm almost leaning towards a two because he's just so good. Um, but it's it's interesting because playing solo, I always think that, like, like you've been saying, Ted, playing at the end of the game, it, the impression that I get, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I feel like you're saying it's almost like a win more right like it's by the end of the game you kind of have the game under control but i always feel like you're just one you know location lock away from losing the game you know so <laughs> this is where this guy it's like location control never feels like a win more it feels like a win more at the beginning of the game when something can't like you just the encounter get, deck can't get its grip on you by having an active location and having it um having it stack up so um this is this guy he is uh, i look to putting him in a lot of my lore decks he doesn't make it all the time but i'm always wondering if the mirkwood explorer should be put in my lore decks so So what you're saying is he's always in your sideboard (laughs) well every card's on my sideboard That's, Ted is completely deadpan. He's like, I'm done talking about this guy. This guy's <laughs> that's like, David is not funny anymore. Okay, well, <laughs> everybody, join us again as Ted finds a sense of humor and we <laughs> talk about more cards. We'll explore that on the next episode of Card Talk. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. <laughs> Do you love the content? Here's what you can do to stay connected. Become a patron. The money collected through Patreon goes into keeping the lights on here at the podcast. We love our patrons and you can join at many different levels. Visit patreon.com slash card talk 2018. You can subscribe to us, whether you're watching our YouTube channel or you're listening to us in your favorite podcatcher. Hit the subscribe button to get notifications of all our new episodes. Didn't know we were an audio podcast? Find us by searching Card Talk to get access to our 120 plus regular episodes. Didn't know we were a video channel? Find us by searching Card Talk L O T R L C G on YouTube. And there you can find not only our regular episodes, but you can find our bonus playthroughs and other content related to the game. Want to get a hold of Ted, Grant, or myself? Feel free to email the podcast at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.